there, welcome to the RPS project. Recently I took apart or opened up my Bosch compact mini disc, it's a compact disc player micro system. I opened it up, wanted to have a look what was inside because the unit wasn't really working anymore. And um, I've gone a step further now, I've actually stripped the guts out of it. And that's just that's just a shell. And this on here is actually the units. All of the units. As you can see, um, power board, main board, um, this is the uh, CD tray really with the motors and the laser on it. And I thought I'd have a bit more of a look on the inside, see what components are actually there, see what made this thing tick, what made it work. And as you can see, there's, there's no surface mount components there because, well, they didn't use surface mount components back then. It's all discrete components. So, um, Let's have an investigation and see what's actually on there. So here's the innards of my machine. The, uh, the Bush mm, micro CD player. I managed to get all the bits out quite easy. And I've sort of connected them back up to where they were. Except for maybe this. This is the uh, power board. Now on the power board, um, being a bit older and a bit more different from more modern stuff. We've got a, a transformer, but it's a bit of a heavier duty transformer than you normally get these days. Uh, we've also got, comes in to a bridge rectifier. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in. Right, so yeah, power board, transformer, and this comes in and we've got a bridge rectifier, a fuse, big ass capacitor there, um, there is a chip underneath this uh, odd looking heat sink um, and some transistors. There's a couple of what appear to be power transistors, but I expect all this is for the output stage for uh, driving the, um, the speakers because that's connected onto here as well. Uh, <coughs> so I expect that's what all this is for rather than anything else, and maybe some voltage regulation for the main board. Um, the, input or the phones headphone jack is there which makes me think that this is output control for for the outputs and everything um, there's also an LED here which is the one that has the uh, the little bar strip you know the little strip that was on the front and this would illuminate that uh, light bar uh, but that is the power board basically so very much old school power board as you can see, they put the on-off switch on the back there with a the little LED, and that is the IR detector for the remote control. And that is all there is to say about the power board. Um, I think I'd have to do a bit more investigation and try and get that heat sink off. I wanted to know what was underneath there, but I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be output controlled and for the for the voltage for the for the speaker output and some voltage regulation so there we go that's the power supply so moving on to the main board um, as you can see that's the uh, controller for the let's see for the, the gizmos for the CD tray uh, there's a um, this that comes from from the back of here onto the main board but I've left it off because it's rather fiddly gets in the way <coughs> so Let's have a quick overview of the um, of the ICs that are on here. On the front, we've got this thing, which is a HEF four hundred one three BP. Next to that, we've got the PT two two four nine A. Then we've got the PT two two five three A. This thing over here, turn this round. I can't quite see the writing on it. Is That's an LA6541 and then at the top here we've got a Toshiba TA2111N. Well that's not all the chips is it because we've got a couple besides these one two three four five there's the two main ones on the back here and we have 
an LA9242 and this thing which looks like an LC70 sorry 78601R now obviously these are going to be the two main controllers so let's have a bit more of a look at each one of these um, processors and we're going to start with I suppose this thing first off is this thing the HEF 4013 BP and well that thing is the HEF 4013B which is a D a dual D type flip-flop why they have a flip-flop in the circuit I don't know but they've got this IC on there um, it says here the dual D type flip-flop that features independent set direct input clear direct input clock input and outputs data is accepted when CP is low and blah 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 and whatever else features tolerant of slow clock rise and fall times full static operation 5 volts 10 volts and 15 volt parameter set ratings standardized symmetric output characteristics complies with JDEC standard JESD 13B um, what's it for counters and dividers registers toggle flip-flops so I'm not really sure what this um, flip-flops doing on the circuit it would appear to be a chip that is there for um, I suppose controlling some input that then controls another output but it's going to be varied it's going to vary over time and this chip helps to make that control of the input onto another device that's going to be varying but um, can't take that variation itself directly so they've used this chip to uh, help that interface next up we have the one that's next to it um, I don't know how well you can see this but that is a PT2249A it's a 16 pin dip package um, by PTC so this little thing is the PT2249A remote control receiver IC so this is an infrared remote control receiver unit and well obviously there's a remote control with the device so you're going to need a remote control infrared receiver unit to control that applications audio equipment control exactly CD player television TV remote control marvelous and video cassette recorder video cassette recorder does anybody remember one of them VCR well, I've got one hanging around somewhere. Now, this is going to be a fairly standard device, I suppose. Uh, it's going to take the IR input with whatever signal in it's got and um, process that based on the device, you know, the, the IC within the remote control, giving out whatever pulses it gives. I expect it's a perfectly good, nice little device. Um, that works just well yes I've got um, the A version this one pin configuration so yeah it just takes the inputs in throws out the outputs to probably the microcontroller that then does its stuff and um, well, hey you press the volume on your remote the volume goes up or down or changes the selection whatever it is it's just a IR controller brilliant next up we have the PT 2253A also by PTC this is also a 16 pin package IC and this little thing is the PT2253A electronic volume control IC from Princeton Technology Corps corporation whatever it is the device is an electronic volume control IC utilizing CMOS technology specifically designed for use in audio equipment which is brilliant it's great it has two two written in two there two and then two built-in channels making it ideally suitable for mono and stereo sound applications which is brilliant in it so it's just a volume control but in an IC package which I suppose is great rather than having to have some 
discrete components which even though the majority of the board is discrete components um, you have a dedicated volume control so you know that you're always going to get accurate control over what is going to come out of the unit pin out there um, obviously it's got two so you've got two channels left left one left two right somewhere is it right one right two so you've got your audio out left and right stereo brilliant um, that's what it is it's a volume control but in an IC package I must admit I never really seen volume control in IC packages before I suppose it all gets dumped on the main processor these days but this has got its own chip just for that moving on to the next chip on the board we have the LA6541 which looks to be a 30 pin dip package quite a sizable um, IC compared to the others <coughs> and uh, this thing is the uh, the LA6541 which is a four channel bridge driver for compact discs um, when I first saw this I wasn't too sure what it was for perhaps this is audio device but actually it's not an audio driver is it it's going to be a motor driver for the um, motors on the laser unit for the CD drive so it can position the laser in the correct position which is well sounds sensible to me because why have it sat in the middle of the board um, I don't know what this data sheet can tell us about that um, just goes on about uh, no load current drain so yeah if there's no load then obviously this is motors output offset voltages buffer amplifier input voltage I presume that the signal has got to be amplified to be able to drive the motors properly um, I'm sure there's lots of good information oh, the block diagram yeah, there we go level shift for left and right or well, there's four of them isn't there so there's four drivers on this so one two three and four so basic device for I presume moving the the motors to the specific desired position so it can read the uh, CD properly what more can I say about it it's the motor controller four channel bridge driver specifically for compact discs there you go so as we reckon this um, or as I reckon this is probably the controller for this monster um, because obviously you've got this connector right next to it um, into here so I reckon this is controlling the um, the motors for this whole assembly you know because um, how else we're going to make it all all move and synchronize up marvelous next up on the board here we've got this thing now it's a bit hard to read there was some glue on top of this had to scrape off but this is by Toshiba so what Toshiba put on here it's a TA2111N now this thing turns out to be the TA2111 3V AM FM one chip tuner IC this is a radio tuner well of course it would be there's a radio on there so you'd need a radio tuner unless you do it really old school with all old um, mounted component discrete components then having a dedicated IC that can help uh, control that uh, signal coming from the the radio tuner then yeah brilliant so you're gonna have a radio IC on there which is great because um, again it's one of those things that means that you get better control over the input and its output and gives you a good nice signal which is going to be more helpful for the amplifier because it probably deal with it better so yeah a dedicated chip for the radio nice little schematic there of the inside of that thing so brilliant I like that dedicated IC for the radio so as we could see that is the 
for the tuner, of which I thought was a, like an old school type tuner because of the um, the core and ferrite core here and this uh, um, wheel for inside what's in this on the back here. has lots of components because it looks like an old school type tuner, but we do have a dedicated chip for it, which is brilliant. Probably makes it a bit more uh, reliable. So now onto the brains of the uh, unit because these two ICs are obviously a bit different from the others. They obviously look more like uh, controller ICs of some sort. Um, this one being uh, the LA9242 and this being the LC78601R. So what are these two things? Well they are the LA9242M analog signal processor for CD players. Um, the overview is the LA9242M is an analog signal processing and server servo control bipolar IC designed for use in compact disc players. A compact disc player can be configured by combining this IC with a CD DSP. I wonder if that's a digital signal processor. Um, I suppose that's probably the other chip on the board. Um, such as the LC78922E. On the board that I've got, I've got an LC78601E. So, yeah, I suppose that's what it is. Um, with a small number of additional components required, in addition, this IC allows CD rewritable disk playback due to the on-chip gain switching function. Brilliant. You can record your own CDs on your computer and then play them back on this, hopefully. Um, yeah, it's it's part of the brains of the system from Sanyo. So this in com com combination with a DSP, so you, I suppose you've got analog signal processor and a digital signal processor, which actually, let's just go down. See, we can see internals. I don't have a schematic for internals of this. Past all oh, this. Is, oh my goodness me! Look at this. It's the the pinout, pin number, uh, and what it all is. This has got a huge amount of function to it. I suppose it's obviously programmed before it gets put on board. Fifty three. No, continues. Sixty four pins. Uh, there's a little block diagram. Yeah, there's a lot on this thing. And this is just one of two ICs because the other one is the LC78601, which is the DSP for um, disc CD, compact disc player. And this is with built-in microcontroller. So this is the real brains. This is the one that's actually going to be programmed to do all the controlling in conjunction with the ASP, the 78601 implements compact disc player signal processing servo control LCD display key input acquisition and remote control processing so it does all the stuff it's the gizmo that gets everything going um, yeah another big IC as we saw loads of chips on there 64 pins by the looks of it so another little diagram yeah these two ICs the um, ASP and the DSP do all the donkey work. They are really the, the brains behind this. Um, and I suppose they probably still work. Um, with my unit, I think basically what's died is the other components. Um, the CD unit doesn't work properly. Maybe the interface is not working quite right. I don't know. But uh, the unit hasn't worked properly for a little while. But there is the brains of it all. So as you can see, there are many things on this board. Um, it's quite well populated, it's all discrete components. The LCD here is, is slightly oddly mounted. I don't know if you can get a view of that. It's like a big chunky thing. Um, with some um, wires connected from here. And this thing is controlled, if I can get it over, by this here. Which is a little board that's been added on to the back. And as a a little chip there with a the black blob on it so we never really know what's underneath there but I expect that is basically just the interface between the information coming from these two main chips to the um to this LCD and the driver for it to, to make it to make it work. 
Um, you've got plenty of other transistors on here. Well, well I've got a load of um, S9014, which is an NPN transistor scattered all over the place. Um, there's a few S9018s, NPNs, and some S9015s, PNPs. Uh, I even found a few S8550, which are PNPs, and a few other types. Um, lots of electrolytics scattered on here. Some, I don't know, uh, these look like little inductors, little coils scattered about on here. And a few other items. Uh, loads of ceramic capacitors as well. There's a crystal down over here. Um, so this is switches obviously as well. So it's quite a comprehensive board with its extensions as well. You know that's just uh, just switches which never seem to work after a while they just seem to stop working. But yeah um, and obviously the, uh, the cradle for the laser for the CD for CD, reading the CDs. And that is what is on this board. Quite a uh, comprehensive um, lump of stuff on there. Uh, yeah, I like this. I like this old uh, school type uh, boarding set up on a board rather than all this surface mount stuff that you can't even work out what half of it is. So there you go, the guts of the machine. Um, without going into um, too much detail, um, um, this you know, board was made specifically for CDs, for reading CDs. The technology that had been around um, for quite some time, because CDs ruled the world then, you know, they were the thing to have in music in um, in the 2000s. If you wanted to play music, you bought a CD. And the technologies had been developed so you could have dedicated chips and ICs uh, and other components that would work specifically for that job, such as the, the two on the back here, um, and the other components they'd obviously been developed in association with that sort of thing. So you could just buy the right parts, just set up the other components that you need to make it all work properly. Um, and hey, presto, there you go. But yeah, it's definitely a bit more um, old school, uh, and, and things have developed a lot since then. Um, surface mount components especially and also the microcontrollers there's a lot more um, fancy stuff going on these days than what's on this board but I mean this worked um, and all in all it's a nice device um, and it managed to last for nearly nearly 20 years this and obviously the technology that was there was being used before that so I don't know it just I just like it I like this older style technology and I think it just did what it meant to be doing, which was to play CDs. And, and obviously, good old radio on there. It tuned into stations and played the radio. So, what more can you say? Um, yeah, I like it. Brilliant. Anyway, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. Subscribe, and all comments are welcome. See you next time.